Freud's choice of subject matter are mostly portraits of people, usually himself, his family members, friends, or fellow artists. They are usually posed to stare at the viewer or into the distance under dramatic lighting. Most of them are presented in a room known to be a space in his house where he paints. Freud avoids choosing professional models because he felt that their skin has become another form of clothing. Some figures are accompanied by animals or the objects they lie on, such as beds, chairs, or racks, which he used to wipe off his paint from his stained brushes. These objects remind viewers of artist's presence. Some have been anthropomorphized. Rumpled bed sheets are skin toned and appear to be rhythmic in movement, fusing with the fleshy tones of the body, revealing an unnerving similarity between inanimate objects and indolent figures. His works might seem straightforward at first, but there is something uncanny about them. Unlike classical genres of idealized bodies, Freud's figures are unflattering and uncompromising. They are grotesque yet erotic, and they intrigue him. They contain absolute likeness. This truthfulness gives a psychological dimension to the painting, inviting viewers to scrutinize the very identity of these figures, as if these smears of paint were alive. Freud paints to depict the truth that lies in front of him. However, unlike social realist artists, Freud has no interest in political or social issues. Instead, his interest lies in the artistic possibilities of depicting each of his subjects' presences in order to communicate his feelings about them while also retaining a degree of emotional distance. This is done through a variety of painting methods, most of which involves a process of close scrutiny and unflinching intensity to carefully translate flesh into paint, revealing the personality of the person and the immensity of the physical body. By doing Doing so, he translates life into art almost literally. He also paints these figures as an autobiographical record to document his life. When you encounter his works, he wants you to ask yourself, who in the world would paint this average looking lady? Why is this person chosen? He wants to astonish, disturb, seduce and convince the viewer of his life. He aims to show his understanding of the fragments of life, loneliness and alienation, to lay bare the true human condition when the person is in a state of rest, vulnerable, unguarded by the clothes or status that they wear, or the emotion that they put on, exposing every scar, wrinkle and state of mind. World War II caused many artists to flee to London. Some of them, including Freud, were grouped together and were known to be the School of London, indirectly linked by friendship and reciprocal admiration. These artists wanted to bring awareness that life is always under threat under the circumstances of modernity, as seen by the wake of the physical and moral destructions wrecked by war. They explored the appearance and vulnerability of the body, setting the city of London as the context. Amidst the avant-garde art movements, the School of London returned to figurative realism, conveying the delicacy and vitality of the human human condition in today's world. They reinvent new styles of seeing and representing human beings. A philosophical belief associated with these artists is existentialism. It emphasizes individual existence, freedom, and choice. It views that humans define their own meaning in life and try to make rational decisions despite existing in an irrational universe, as proven in World War II. This could have influenced Freud's depiction of figures as lost, dreary individuals responding to the bleak world, and his painting process as a rational yet subjective attempt to understand the irrational world as truthfully as he can. Freud used to live with his grandfather, Sigmund Freud, a famous psychologist who thought that sexual repression was the chief psychological problem of mankind. In the past, Western societies suppressed sex as a taboo subject. However, Sigmund Freud claimed that sexual repression was unhealthy and the indirect cause of crime and illness. He uncovered sexual repression in his patients through psychoanalysis to cure them. Lucian Freud could have been influenced by his grandfather, as seen in his works that are riddled with sexual undertones. He depicted the genitalia prominently with as much detail as the face, as seen by the amalgamation of thick paint creating visceral and tactile surfaces, suggesting an indulgent voyeurism. Doing so embraces the reality of the human being, that each person has the innate desire to satisfy their love and lust, and should have the freedom to do so, echoing the sentiments of existentialism. The influence can also be seen from the high vantage point in his works, making viewers feel as if they are towering over the powerless figure, the same position that Freud takes when he scrutinizes the body as if it was under a microscope, like a psychologist analyzing his patients, figuring out what lies in the hidden depths of her mind. Freud always started with charcoal to do the underdrawing. He then painted from the nose area, then outwards to the face, then the rest of the body and space. Each stroke creates a patch of close toned hues. After every stroke, he cleaned his brush on the rags or the walls. This shows his attention to detail and his desire to create presences and textures of things. The textural complexity was achieved through the use of hawk's hair brushes, known for their stiffer bristles compared to sable brushes. These brushes enabled him to communicate the energy and mass beneath the sitter's skin and the fluctuating conditions of the skin itself. He he also liked to use Kremlin's white paint and the impasto technique to create sculptural qualities. He changed his style in the late 1950s. He stood up when he paints, making vigorous and looser strokes that created an expressive and athletic style, while maintaining an equilibrium between painterly risk and fidelity to the subject, reminding viewers of expressionist painters such as Egon Chila and Edward Munch. He paints over long periods of time, some taking up to two years to finish, leaving his models to adopt a deathly pallor, their facial expressions drooping, their eyes glazing over in exhaustion, a pose that excited. 
Freud.